Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Sophie Erber. It's now two days after the election and still no official winner in the presidential race. A handful of key battleground states are still up for grabs and they will decide this election. ABC's Alex Prochet has the latest from the White House in our top story at five. Tonight, the election spotlight is just on a handful of states that can pave a path to victory for either presidential candidate. ABC News projecting former Vice President Joe Biden likely to win Michigan and Wisconsin. And he's now just 17 electoral votes shy of the 270 needed to win the presidency. Heading into this afternoon, Pennsylvania had about 560,000 mail-in ballots left to count. Biden needing roughly 61% of those to win the state. Democracy is sometimes messy. It sometimes requires a little patience as well. His campaign confident as mail-in voters have favored Democrats and much of the outstanding vote comes from heavily Democratic Philadelphia. Though the city's facing increased scrutiny over vote counts and a Pennsylvania judge granted the Trump campaign's request to more closely observe poll workers. Give us access! Give us as they process remaining mail-in ballots. If President Trump loses here, the race is over. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. The president's aides telling ABC News there's growing concern in Georgia as well. The margin there now razor thin, less than 15,000 votes in favor of Trump. Fast is great, and we appreciate fast. We more appreciate accuracy. New numbers out of Nevada show another close race, Biden slightly increasing his lead, though only 80% of the expected vote is in. Eyes also on Arizona, where Mr. Trump has been closing the gap as each new tally is released. Trump supporters demanding the vote counting continue there. I don't understand what these protesters are interested in. Obviously, we're going to keep counting ballots. That's what we are required to do by law. Sources close to President Trump tell ABC News that his path is narrow and looking increasingly tough. Meanwhile, Joe Biden is urging his supporters to remain patient. And while his campaign has not declared victory, it has moved on to the next phase, setting up a Biden-Harris transition website. Alex Perche, ABC News, the White House. Meanwhile, in Iowa, Secretary of State Paul Pate says that he's applauding the state's quick returns on election night. Iowa was able to deliver those results within hours of the polls closing, while other states still have not returned the final tallies. Pate says the secret to this year's success was to start early on the record number of absentee ballots that came in this year. County auditors were allowed to start processing those ballots on Monday of this week, while states like Pennsylvania were not allowed to start processing ballots until the polls closed. And now that the election has come and gone, you might be thinking about removing any political signs you have in your yard. You are no longer required by state law to take signs out of your yard following an election, but there are a few things you should know if you plan on recycling them. Political signs are made out of corrugated plastic and metal. Waste authorities tonight ask that you separate the metal frame from the sign and then recycle each piece separately to avoid damaging their recycling equipment. Earlier this week, South Dakota voters passed two historic marijuana ballot measures that legalized the drug statewide. Now it's up to the South Dakota legislature to implement the will of the people. Sarah McDonald sat down with congressional leaders for a closer look at this process. Amendment A will legalize, regulate, and tax marijuana. The amendment legalizes the possession, use, transportation, and distribution of marijuana by anyone who is 21 years and older. State Representative and Speaker of the House Stephen Haugard says there could be some challenges when the issues are discussed in the legislature. We really need to figure out uh, if that constitutional amendment is sufficient in itself to clarify some of those issues. I suspect we're probably going to have some challenges to that because it is so long. And, you know, even in our legislature, when we pass a bill that's a paragraph, we spend a lot of time arguing about the wording, and uh, then we might come back in the following years and address that. This, though, is a constitutional amendment, so it's a little more difficult to do that. Senate Minority Leader Troy Heinert says it's important to make sure it gets implemented properly. We have a roadmap of other states of how they did it, and we can either choose to look at them and learn from them and see what works and make a plan that, that fits uh, South Dakota, or we can just negate the will of the people and, and say, no, we're not going to do this. I would think that's a mistake. And that will take time and effort. There are also lots of statutes on the books that are going to need changed. Um, the possession, ingestion as a felony uh, that A, didn't really deal with, but we know 
in order to implement A, we have to change these other statutes. It's going to be, uh, you know, a challenge to try to figure out how do you weave this together with current law, both state and federal. So there are a lot of things that it addresses. Time now to turn our attention to this beautiful weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, you said you sound like a broken record, but I know you and I don't mind. Uh, yeah. Mid-70s for some of us today. Others uh, still in the 60s. Very pleasant. Yeah, very nice day. Once again, all week long, we've had very nice weather. Sunshine every single day. Temperatures every day warming up into the 70s. And no difference today. Getting to 76 degrees here in Sioux City for your high temperature. Recording 77 in Wayne and Norfolk. 75 in Yankton today. 73 in Orange City as well as Lamar's and Storm Lake, a pair of 75s for your highs there in Denison and Carroll. So a very nice day, no matter where you are at in Siouxland. Overnight tonight, again, we'll see comfortable temperatures, especially for this time of year, as they will drop into the low to mid 40s. But again, we'll see those clear skies, very quiet weather again tonight. Tomorrow, it looks like winds will increase a bit, but it's still going to be another nice day. This weekend, we're going to see even windier conditions. Details on all of that in the 9 on 9. Sophie? All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Taking a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Siouxland. Woodbury County health officials confirmed the 102nd virus-related death here. 110 new cases bring the countywide total past the 8,000 infection mark. Nearby Sioux County totaling more than 2,800 cases. In Nebraska, Dakota County has 21 new positive tests coming back today. The county totals more than 2,700 cases of the virus. And in South Dakota, Union County confirms 12 new cases today. The county totals more than 800 positive COVID-19 tests. Iowa's Governor Kim Reynolds holding a press conference today to address the record number of hospitalizations. The governor announcing that she planned on rolling out an ad campaign designed to spread more awareness about COVID-19 prevention measures. She is stressing that while hospitals are currently handling this increase in COVID-19 loads, the situation does need to improve. While hospital capacity is stable for now, it isn't sustainable if positive cases continue to surge at this level. It's their hope that Iowans will also step up and help care for their local hospitals and their care, health care providers by doing their part to stop the spread of the virus. And Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts also addressing the state's record number of hospitalizations. Ricketts saying he is taking a similar approach to the state's surging numbers by also launching a public service campaign. A PSA to radio stations across the state. Uh, that, that is out there in English, and we'll have one in Spanish here in the next couple of days. And we'll also be doing a paid media and digital campaign as well, emphasizing these three Cs, and then we'll have other campaigns as well to remind people about the tools that we have to be able to slow the spread of the virus. Meanwhile, for Nebraskan organizations who need some federal assistance, there are still funds available, but not for long. The Coronavirus Food Assistance Program is available for farmers and ranchers affected by this pandemic. There's also limited funding available through the CARES Act for organizations like nonprofits and also places of worship. One Siouxland organization says the grant has helped keep their doors open throughout this pandemic. The grant award has been great for Heartland because it did allow us to hire new staff to keep up with the demand, um, or at least try to keep up with the demand, um, and provide the mental health and substance abuse services that are needed. And coming up tonight at 6, KCAU 9 News reporter Lydia Vasquez explains the deadlines to apply and also what you need to know if you are in need of federal funding. $33,000, that's the balance of unfunded lunches in the Sioux City School District in the 2019-2020 school year. But there's a program tonight helping pay down that balance and also feed those students who are in need. It's called the 3030 Project, and the Director of Operations of Sioux City Public Schools Foundation says food pantry served roughly 800 students last year. This year they've experienced a 15% increase in requests for the food pantry because of the pandemic. It's important for people to understand that our students do well when they have all their basic needs met. And hunger is one of those things that if a child is well fed, they can focus on their studies and they can concentrate and just do better. Nelson adds that $30 can pay for 10 days of lunch for one student. Well, eSports are exploding in popularity because of the pandemic, and we'll show you now how some people are using that rise in popularity to make a living coming up. And it looks like the warm and sunny weather will continue at least for a couple more days. We'll have a pleasant weekend, but next week, colder air and rain chances. Details on all of that after the break.
You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Thanks for sticking with us. Honestly, Marcus, a, a hard day to be inside mm -hmm. oh, because yeah. it's dry, it's sunny. Uh, we're really lucking out with the streak of yeah, weather. It's been a really boring for you, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I like it, though. I'll take the boring weather now because the cold weather is eventually going to show up. It feels really nice out there right now. So if you have the chance to get outside and enjoy the nice weather this evening, go ahead and do it. It's been a very warm day all day long. Our temperature today, again, reaching up into the mid 70s. A high temperature recorded of 76 degrees in Sioux City. Only a couple degrees shy of the record set back in 1945 of 78. Normal high temperature this time of year is 53, so again, well above the normal. This morning, 34 degrees starting out, so we were pretty close to the normal low temperature of 31. The record, though, pretty far off at 6 degrees. That one's going to stick around another year as well, set back in 1951. So a couple records still sticking around. The view outside right now from the KCA United Studio brought to you by the Port Neal Welding Company showing that we are seeing quiet weather out there. Again, very nice evening here through, all throughout Siouxland. And it looks like we're going to carry that into the overnight period tonight. Temperatures right now in the upper 60s for most of us. 67 in Sioux City and Wayne, 68 in Lamar's Cherokee at 65 degrees. 66 in Spencer, Storm Lake at 68, as well as Carroll. So we're still very, very comfortable outside. Open up the windows because it is going to be a very nice night. Wind speeds are on the lighter side once again right now. Five mile per hour winds in Sioux City out. You know, uh, we're not clairvoyant, but I will say this looks like at least the last summery stretch we're going to get for a while. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We could see a little bit of a surge, but we are beginning to get more into November. And December is not too far away, so the colder air is probably eventually going to stay here soon. All right, thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, the Salvation Army of Siouxland now looking for folks to volunteer for this year's Red Kettle program. Speaking of December, the nonprofit has 15,000 hours of bell ringing to fill with 40 locations across Sioux City, Sergeant Bluff, Lamars, and South. Sioux. Captain Chris Clark of the Salvation Army of Siouxland says there are COVID-19 protocols in place to protect these bell ringers, along with protecting their customers and staff at the stores. If you'd like, you could read the full story because it's on our website right now, SiouxlandProud.com, or check out the free KCAU 9 news app. And do you know someone with a unique skill or hobby? If so, we want to know them as well. Later this month, we're sharing their stories, and I hope you'll share those Siouxland stories with me. Shoot us an email at the address there on your screen, news at kcautv.com. Briefly explain what it is that this person does that's so interesting. We want to tell their stories. And after the break, a former soldier using his filmmaking gifts, showing the world what it's like to come home from war. We have his story coming up in about eight minutes, but first, esports surging in popularity during this pandemic. We'll show you how some people are using it as a way to make a living now, coming up. The pandemic has forced millions of people to spend more time at home. And while traditional sports might not be as popular in 2020, eSport leagues are growing in size. Pat McGonigal reports. But here comes memory. The old guard looks to try and double up. Oh. And I think that shot was a bit high, but still forces the save from Rails. Huge demo. You might not know it to look at this, but you're looking at one of the fastest growing sports in the world. It's exceeding, you know, viewership and expectations of traditional sports. You're looking at Rocket League. It's an e-sport. It's basically three-on-three -three soccer with trucks instead of players. And this sport has professional players and teams competing for big money. L.J. Brown is the founder of the KC Pioneers. Well, at the moment, we have the number 8 through 11 uh, Rocket League team in the world globally. Um, and we have the number 5 team in North America, uh, which is a pretty big deal because Rocket League is one of the biggest esports in the world right now. And the KC Pioneers just secured a sponsorship deal with DoorDash. Hold on one second. Hey, y'all, I'll be right back. My DoorDash is here. Esports like Rocket League are streamed on platforms like Twitch and YouTube. There's professional announcers, diehard fans, and millions of kids dreaming to make it big in this arena. There's scholarship opportunities for this. There's job opportunities for this. This is a career for, you know, people from the age of 13 to 
there is no, you know, there's no, there's no maximum age limit on this. And there's no telling how big this industry will get. But one thing's for sure, 19-year-old L.J. Brown and the KC Pioneers will be a big part of that future. This company was started in a college dorm, and um, right now uh, we are, our team sponsors DoorDash. We're partnering with Under Armour, um, and it's, it's going, it's, it's big right now. Well, once a Marine, now a filmmaker, using his talents to help other veterans transition back to civilian life. We'll bring you his story when we come back. A retired Marine decided to get behind the camera, helping show people what it's like to come home from active duty service. As Jamie Seymour explains, the project not only helped him deal with his transition, it's helping others too. Before he was an Albuquerque-based film director, Stephen Canty served in the U.S. Marines. When I was 18 years old in 2008, um, I went to Afghanistan for the first time. After a second tour during one of the military's toughest battles, he returned to civilian life, unsure of what was next until he bought a camera. That was the start of Once a Marine, a documentary about going to war and coming home changed, made by combat veterans. It hasn't been easy. And it's kind of my way of coming back from war was explaining that experience to people. A few years ago, Candy took the early parts of the film to a crowdfunding site, which allowed him to travel from interviews with former Marines to visiting the graves of those he served with. Some of them even like kind of poured their hearts out and then went and made music for the film. So it's just been this kind of community effort. Kitty says it helps to know these stories resonate with fellow veterans who have served everywhere from Vietnam to Iraq. I think a lot of people want their loved ones to know that this experience of going to war is, you know, it's going to change you and uh, it's okay. Those behind Once a Marine hope others can understand the cost of war and maybe even get a conversation going with their loved ones. Taking a live look outside now from Storm Lake, a beautiful sunset there. Marcus returns with another check on your weekend forecast coming up next. Stay with us. Get lucky. Well, we had a beautiful day and uh, still a beautiful mm -hmm. night for all yep. those commuters heading home. And temperatures really not falling off much tonight. Right. We're going to see them drop into the lower 40s, but really for this time of year, not bad at all. It is going to be a quiet and cool night. Winds out of the south at around 5 to 10. So a little bit of light wind tonight. Tomorrow you'll notice the wind a bit more as it will be, will be blowing around 10 to 15, gusting up to 25. But we'll have a high temperature of 77 with plenty of sunshine tomorrow. So a great end to the work week and a nice weekend ahead as well. All right, sounds great. Thanks a lot, Marcus, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here at 6. Good night.